Namaste angels. I've been sent back to go over the Dred Scott decision uh, with you because in the last video, um, Jesus walks three A one. Um, I was still somewhat entranced in great part and actually was completely exhausted and had to lay down with some healing sounds after I finished um, reading that channel message to you. Um, but the, oh shit, the Dred Scott decision, that was all real. <laughs> um, and oh shit, I'm still like, oh shit, somebody's in some serious shit here. <laughs> somebody's in trouble. God is really angry. Um, and let me get started right away because I'm probably going to have to come back. I'm going to do this hopefully in one of those videos that I'm able to upload straight away. Um, I certainly will have prayed at least five times long before sundown today. Get mine in. So I was about to, I don't know, close out of the Bible or do, so. I don't even know what I was doing, but some, all of a sudden I saw J O S 13 as in like Joe's. So I clicked on it and it's Joshua. And I ended up reading this when I when was just about to start this, by the way, it was 1219 again. Um, and then by the time I was actually hitting the button on the camera, it was 1221, which I told you are the numbers from the Mayan calendar. So I think that was not on an accident. Okay, Josh, Josh, goodness, I can't even speak. Archangel Mike, I need help. Um, Joshua chapter 13, division of land commanded. When Joshua was old and advanced in his years, the Lord said to him, though now you are old and advanced in years, a very large part of the land still remains to be possessed. This is the remaining land all Gesher, G-E-S-H-U-R, and all the districts of the Philistines, in parenthesis they have, from the stream adjoining Egypt to the boundary of Ekron, E-K-R-O-N, in the north, is reckoned Canaanite territory, though held by the five lords of the Philistines in Gaza, Ashad, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, so Gaza right away, I'm like, oh, the Gaza Strip, all that fighting over it is, you know, well, we knew that it's because these people don't, it doesn't belong to the people who are trying to claim it belongs to them. Um, but, you know, it was interesting to see that listed there. Anyway, also where the Avim are, A-V-V-I-M, in the south, all the land of the Canaanites from Mira, M-E-A-R-A-H, and the Sidonians. Sidonians, S-I-D. And remember the other day I was saying something about Sid? And I said, I looked up Sid, and I never really came back to that. That's probably what this was. He was trying to tell me about these Sidonians back then. Anyway, um, mirror of the Sidonians to Aphek, A-P-H-E-K, and the boundaries of the Amorites, A-M-O-R-I-T-E-S, like Amore, um, right? And maybe that's what that Amore message was about that I read at, in that moment as armor. And I thought he was telling me, go get your armor again, which he may have been telling me that as well. But anyway, um, and the Gebalite, G-E-B-A-L-I-T-E -E territory and all the Lebanon on the east from Baal, B-A-A-L dash Gad, G-A-D, at the foot of Mount Hermon. Mount, sound, reminds me a little bit of Mount Vernon, Mount Hermon, okay, to Lebo Hamath, all the inhabitants of the mountain regions between Lebanon and Misrethath Mime, Misrethath Mime, they have it broken up over two lines, and it's a unfamiliar word, so one second, it's M I S. R-E-P-H-O-T-H-M-A-I-M. 
all Sidonians I will drive out before the Israelites at least include these areas in the division of the Israelite heritage just as I have commanded you let me read that so again so it makes sense all the inhabitants of the mountain regions between Lebanon and this place Misrephoth Misrephoth Mame all Sidonians I will drive out before the Israelites at least include these areas in the division of Israelite heritage just as I have commanded you now therefore a portion among the nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh M A N A S S E H the land which is to be their heritage the eastern tribes now the other half of the tribe of Manasseh as well as the Reubenites and Gadites had taken as their heritage what Moses the servant of the Lord had given them east of the Jordan he's talking about the Jordan River of which I spoke the other day I said the prophet Elijah was the guardian of the Jordan River um from Aroer, A-R-O-E-R, on the bank of the Wadi Arnon, W-A-D-I. And that's actually what my, that's, was my, um, that was Dee's grandmother's Muslim name, spelled differently, but it was Wadi. Her name was Wadi Ali. Um, from Aroer, on the bank of Wadi Arnon, A-R-N-O-N, and the city in the Wadi itself through the tableland of Medeba and Dibon, M-E-D-E-B-A and D-I-B-O-N, with the rest of the cities of Silhan, I'm sorry, there's no L there. I need glasses maybe, uh, or I need some more crystals. Sihon, S-I-H-O-N, king of the Amorites who reigned in Heshbon, H-E-S-B-O, in my old boss at the ice cream parlor's name was Hesh. He made me manor, manager of his store at only like 16. My forearms are sick because of it from making and scooping ice, you know, ice cream. You know, Michael Jackson bad, not, not, not sick, you know, as in ill. Well, ill, yeah, I am ill, but in a good way. Okay, getting back to this. Um... The entire kingdom of Bashan, of Og. So kind of like Oz, but it's OG. Oh, like an OG. Who was king at Ashtaroth, A-S-H-T-A-R-O-T-H. And Edrei, E-D-R-E-I. In parentheses, they have, he was a holdover from the remnant of Rephaim. R-E-P-H-A-I-M. Or Rephaim. Maybe like Raphael, Raphael, I don't know. Um, these, Moses, these Moses defeated and dispossessed. Oh, so that wouldn't be Raphael, no. But the Israelites did not dispossess the Geshurites and the Makathites, M-A-A-C-A-T-H-I-T-E-S, so that Gesher, G-E-S-H-U-R, and Makath, M-A-A-C-A-T-H, dwell in the midst of Israel to this day. So for some reason, they didn't, they didn't evict, evict these particular people. I guess they belong there. Um, and line 14, and this is where I stopped. This is where I felt I was meant to stop. So I went, I read through 1313, and then this, this portion of the story closed with line 14. And I thought about 1313 Mockingbird Lane and the Munsters. That was their address. Oh, and I just read, read something about Hermon. God doesn't make mistakes. Hermon. Like Hermon Munster. I don't see it now, but I absolutely did. Um, anyway, line 14. This is a, important for us. However... Moses assigned no heritage to the tribe of Levi. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their heritage, as the Lord has promised them. So I was absolutely meant to find that, see that, read that, and 
attach it to what we've been reading so far. And this is not, this stuff is no way in order. This is, you know, stuff that I'm definitely being led to by spirit. Read this one now, read this one now. This is completely different books. So, so far I've read Jeremiah, um, Deuteronomy, Kings 2, and now this is Joshua. You know, and just the precise pages that link up with each other. Okay, now the Dred Scott decision. And when I first went to look up the Dred Scott decision, I was I had to gasp myself. Um, I didn't check these dates, but I'm sure they're something too. Argued February 11th through the 14th, so 2:11 through 214, 1856. I'll do it after. I can't even think right now. Re-argued December 15th through the 18th, 1856. Decided March 6th, 1857. Full case name, Dred Scott B. John F. A. Sanford. Citations 60, so 6, 60 U.S. 393, whatever that means. Also, Six, right? Um, three and three is six plus nine is fifteen. One and five is six. So this is your six six or or a six six for us. It's from the next line says nineteen Howard three ninety three. So nineteen again, first of all. And I just saw twelve nineteen before I started this, I told you. Um, 19 is 1. Howard. Don't know who Howard is yet. But 393, again, is 6. Then it says 15, which is 6. L, E, D, 6, 9, 1. So 69, again, our number with a 1 here. Um, 6, 9, 1 is 16. That's 7. Something else here was 7 as I was looking real quick. I don't know what now, but I had just seen a seven and I didn't mention it. Anyway, um, underneath that, it says 1856. So 9-11. That's what 1856 is. W-L, don't know what that is. Because right, I'm reading something off this like seal, like U.S. Supreme Court of the United States seal of the... Supreme Court, yeah, this is a picture of that. Um, 1856, 9-11, W-L, 87, 21, 15, 16, 17, 18, 9. So 9-11, 9, and this could be the I, I, I that I came up with the other day and I associated with negativity in one way, uh, having to do with Lilith and the dark moon, you know, as opposed to Gemini that it's I, I. Anyway, the next word is Lexis, L-E-X-I-S. Okay, so I couldn't make any of this up. This is all God. We've been talking about Lex, and I've been trying to figure out what Lex is. I lounge on Lex, and I love sex, and all Peter Guns. I mean, this is go back, goes back all the way to that. Uh, when I read that song, Deja Vu, by Peter Guns. Um, so, yes, U.S. Lexus. It looks like it may be. Is this a hyperlink? Can I click on this? No, it's not. So I don't know what U.S. Lexus is. We'll have to Google it. And 472, which is 11-2, which is 11-11, 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1, um, which this video is going to be, 1, 1, 1, 1, or 1V, depending upon how Spirit tells me to write it. And it's either going to be called, um, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Naughty Dread Scott, or it'll be like the original Naughty Dread Locks, but spelled D-R-E-D, Dread which I think is why he was telling me the other day, Dreddy, Dreddy. He was trying to tell me about the Dred Scott decision then. Um, anyway, this is a breakthrough, I feel, for us. 
let me tell you what the Dred Scott decision is. But those all are numbers that freaked me out, kind of, actually. You know, even me. And the other day, I was driving. I'm not sure if I was in this dimension or not. Because I passed a building in Chinatown that I probably have passed 10,000 times. But all of a sudden, I see there's like no building there. So I see the next building, like the wall. Um, it's like a building has been removed, has been taken down. So I see the next building where they had been semi-attached. I see that building's wall. And there's graffiti. And at the top, real big in graffiti, it says, bow down. And I said, that's for me. But I'm, I'm not like that. And I didn't say anything at the time to anybody about it. Although I, I did say out loud, that's for me. And I don't even know if my daughter heard me or knew what I was talking about or what. Um, like a day or two later is when he had me read Bow Down, West Side Connection. And I said, I, you know, I felt a little bit better about it. I said, oh, okay, it's this. Um, and, you know, and I can share this with everybody else. I don't have to feel like I'm telling people to bow down to me because that kind of stuff has always disturbed me. Like people kissing like the Pope's ring and stuff, not this Pope. I haven't seen anybody do it. I mean, that doesn't mean they don't, but I haven't seen it. But like Pope John Paul, they used to fall and they used to kiss his ring and stuff. And I used to go, oh my goodness, the Pope's letting them do that. He's going straight to hell. I mean, I don't know if he was a, then and is, was, did, I don't know. But that's what used to come to my mind. And sometimes my mouth, it used to like freak me out. And I'm, I'm so, so like not like that. And in ways like with the song I just read, Ego by Beyonce, God does push us all, you know, to be the nine of fire, you know, in great ways he does. He says, be what you are, who you are, accept it and stand up for yourself. Be the seven of fire too, you know, defend it. Um, but he wants us humble at the same time. So maybe I'm imbalanced in that way that I'm Sometimes I'm too humble and I got to learn to walk the line in the middle a little bit better. I don't know, but I still feel better that I can, that at that point when I read the Bow Down song, I was able to share it with you. And more and more in this moment, I'm allowed to share it with you all. This is that moment from that song, um, you know, Bow Down when you come to our town. Bow down because we ain't no haters like you. Bow down to some niggas that's greater than you. And that's all of us. These so-called white folks who think they, you know, they think they're white. They're niggas, you know, from Paris, just like the rest of us. They are in some serious shit. This is serious. Let me keep going and you'll see. Ooh, you'll do. Ooh, Lord. Just like I did. So the Dred Scott decision, also known as Dred Scott v. Sanford. Dred Scott v. Sanford, 60 U.S. 393, 1857, also known simply as the Dred Scott case, was a landmark decision by the U.S. Supreme Court in which the court held that a Negro whose ancestors were imported into the U.S. and sold as slaves, whether enslaved or free, could not be an American citizen and therefore had no standing to sue in federal court, and that the federal government had no power to regulate slavery in the federal territories acquired after the creation of the United States. Dred Scott, an enslaved man of the Negro African race who had been taken by his owners to free states and territories, attempted to sue for his freedom. In a 7-2 to two decision written by Chief Justice Roger B. Taney, T-A-N-E-Y. So if your last name is Taney and you think you might be related to this man, you have some um, forefathers stuff on your soul to clear ASAP. The court denied Scott's request. The decision was only the second time that the Supreme Court had ruled an act of Congress to be unconstitutional. Although Tanny hoped that his ruling would finally settle the slavery question, the decision immediately spurred vehement dissent from anti-slavery elements in the North 
especially Republicans, many contemporary lawyers and most modern legal scholars consider the ruling regarding the slavery in the territories to be dictum, not binding precedent. The decision proved to be an indirect catalyst for the American Civil War. So they're talking about Republicans, not the kind we know. This is long time ago when Republicans used to be decent folks <laughs> for the, as, as decent as they could have been um, in a climate and element of, you know, the North Atlantic slave trade and people like Christopher Columbus coming here and saying that they discovered it when there were people already living here and when people had visited a lot earlier than him, 500 years earlier, people called the Vikings and did so peacefully among the Native Americans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and of course, the Moors were also in existence and walking around wherever they wanted to be. Um, as in we three kings of Orient, this was three Asiatic kings that went to visit the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph when they were expecting their child. Okay. Um, so this started the American Civil War. It was a catalyst, it says. It was functionary... It was functionally superseded by the Civil Rights Act of 1866, but we know that didn't do much anyway because nothing really ended, um, you know, by, well, nothing's really ended up completely anyway, I was going to say for black people by way of any of this kind of foolishness. We, we're still getting lynched in the South, especially. There's still black people turning up missing and being found hanging from trees. Strange fruit. A lot of fucking strange fruit in this country. Still, I have seen with my own eyes the Klan, people in hoods holding crosses, symbols of God on fire, like they represent something or somebody, something holy. Lord, please help me. Okay, um... The decision proved to be an indirect catalyst for the American war. It was functionally superseded by the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and by the 14th Amendment, the United States Constitution, which gave American citizens, um, which gave African Americans full citizenship. And I have to read this because I'm pretty sure that I have always disagreed with that statement and said it still didn't give us full citizenship. Like I found the loophole myself and I'm sure I'm not alone. Anyway, I want to finish reading this paragraph and there'll be a lot more of us, a lot more for us to go over about the Dred Scott decision, but I'll get this portion up. I'll try to include the song that one of the songs um, that God has been telling me about. The Supreme Court's decision in Dred Scott versus Sanford is unanimously denounced by scholars. Bernard Schwartz says it stands first in any list of the worst Supreme Court decisions. Chief Justice C.E. Hughes calls it the court's greatest self-inflicted wound. Junius, so J-U-N-I-U-S, P. Rodriguez says it is universally condemned. Maybe he's a Puerto Rican. I'm looking at P. Rodriguez, his name, P.R. Today is the day of the... Puerto Rican Day Parade in, in Spanish Harlem. And that just came to me. Maybe he's Puerto Rican. I mean, he doesn't have to be. But I just, again, saw the PR next to, next to each other in his name. And that came to mind. Uh, so anyway, Junius P. Rodriguez says it is universally condemned as the U.S. Supreme Court's worst decision. Conig et al. So this is capital K-O-N-I-G et al. So that's a, mean, a Latin term, I think, meaning... Um, you know, and them, like Koenig and them, everybody basically, say it was unquestionably our court's worst decision ever. Now, when I read this, the title, I said, Dred Scott versus Sanford. Sanford, Florida? I wonder if Sanford, Florida is named after this John F.A. Sanford guy. Did I look up John F.A. Sanford? I should have. We'll do a piece of him. We'll do his Wikipedia preview. John, and we'll go into him more later. And again, the, the whole thing. 
excuse me, John F. A. Sanford was a frontiersman of the American West who worked with Native American tribes as an Indian agent, whatever the fuck that is. He later joined Pierre Chateau, C H O U T E A U, Jr., in a fur trapping and trading business. Born in 1806, so 9, 6, 15, 6. Died 1857, 9, 14 plus 7 is 21, 3. Um, 6 and 3 is 9. Books, only one listed. Dred Scott B. Sanford, A Brief History with